Under the Volcano From Stories of Survival by Fiona Bedell Copyright Pearson Education Limited Published by Penguin Readers Joanna Baring heard a great noise coming from the island of Krakatoa. It made her nervous. Three months ago, Krakatoa was just an ordinary island. But then it suddenly started pouring out smoke. Strange noises were heard. People realised that the mountain on the island was a volcano. No one worried too much though. There were other volcanoes in the area and they were not often a problem. But today the noises sounded different, more dangerous. Joanna Baring and her husband Willem were Dutch, but they were living far from home in the island of Sumatra. It was 1883 and Sumatra had a Dutch government at the time. Willem worked for the government in the small coastal town of Ketimbang. The Bearings lived very comfortably there, with plenty of Sumatran servants to look after their house and their three children. On the beach, Willem watched the waves. They were much bigger than usual that Sunday evening and were breaking many of the fishing boats on the sand. At eight o'clock, little pieces of volcanic rock started falling from the sky like rain. One of the waves reached the building next to the Bearings' home. It was time for Willem to find somewhere safer for his family. There was a little house in the hills behind Ketimbang where the Bearings usually spent the hottest days of summer. Willem decided to take his wife and children there. While Joanna was getting everybody ready for the long walk, some Sumatrans ran to her in fear. The ocean has gone, they cried. There's no water now, only sand. Above the noise of the rocks raining on the roof, she heard another noise. It was coming from the ocean, and it was getting louder and louder. She pulled her youngest child to her and shouted to the others, Come here everyone, together! A great wave crashed into the house. Outside, Willem Bearing was safely up a tree. After the wave fell back, he ran to the house. The buildings in the yard were washed away and the stairs in the house were gone too. But his family was safe up on the first floor. I can't get up to you, Willem called. Jump and I'll catch you. We're going now. Soon the Bearings and their servants were hurrying into the hills. Behind them, the ocean made angry noises. They could not go the usual way because the coast was too dangerous. They went through the forest, but it was dark and there was no path. They quickly got lost. Luckily, they met some Sumatrans who were also running from Ketimbang. The Sumatrans helped everyone through the trees, one person holding on to the next. They reached the little house in the hills at about midnight. The family and servants crowded into the simpler shelter, but no one could sleep. The noises from Krakatoa were too loud. Outside, thousands of Sumatrans were also spending the night on high ground. They shook with fear and asked Allah for help. Morning came. While the servants prepared some food, Joanna went outside. She looked around in fear. The ground was covered with ash and volcanic rock. There was an unnatural darkness, lit only by lightning and by thousands of strange tongues of fire on the ground. She went back inside to eat. But after the meal, ash started flying up through the spaces in the wooden floor. Then everything went completely black and everyone was thrown to the ground. 
large pieces of rock fell through the roof, each piece bigger than the last. Joanna heard screams around her and people shouting, Allah, Allah. Then there were bodies on top of her and kicking feet. But she could not hear her family. Joanna felt that there was no air in the house. She wanted to go outside, but at first she could not move. Then, slowly, she made her way to the door. She could not find the steps. She fell onto the hot ash on the ground outside. She started walking, but her hair was soon caught in a burnt tree. As she pulled herself free, she noticed her skin. It was hanging heavily from her body, covered with thick ash. She thought at first she was just dirty. She tried to clean herself, but the skin came off in big pieces. It hurt terribly, but her tired mind did not understand that she was badly burned. Willem found her in this state. Come inside, he said. We should die together. Don't say that, she replied. There'll be rescuers here soon. They'll take us to the hospital. The hospital is probably destroyed, he said sadly. Around them were the dead bodies of a thousand Sumatrans. About two thousand were still alive, but they were all terribly burned. One of the servants brought Joanna her baby son. He seemed very thirsty, so she tried to give him some milk. Suddenly his body stopped moving. She listened to his chest. She could not hear his heart. His suffering has ended, she said calmly. People around her started to cry for the dead child, but Joanna could not cry. Everything seemed unreal, like a bad dream. The hours and days passed in that terrible darkness. News came on the Tuesday night that worse was coming. You must leave this place, a Sumatran told the bearings. This mountain is a volcano too, and it's going to kill you all. Willem and Joanna looked at the top of the mountain. There was a green light around it. Was it as dangerous as Krakatoa? They did not wait to find out. With their two surviving children and their servants, they hurried down the hill towards Ketimbang. They met some people coming from the town. We got into the river to protect us from the ash rain, they said. But Ketimbang is destroyed. The houses were broken by falling rocks and almost everyone is dead. Some were killed by the burning ash and others by houses crashing down on them. Suddenly it started to rain again. Not ash or rock this time, but hot, wet earth. One of the servants was sent to get a table from the house in the hills. The two bearing children were soon sheltering under the table. Their parents lay at each end to give them better protection. When the rain stopped, they stood up. Joanna noticed something wonderful in the sky. A small circle of red light. It was Wednesday morning and finally the sun was reaching through the clouds of ash. Slowly, the darkness of the last two days lifted. Sunlight. Joanna looked towards Krakatoa. At first, she could not understand what she was seeing. Krakatoa has disappeared, she cried. It was true. The big island and its 800 meter high mountain were gone. There was just a small, low island there now. On Monday morning, the volcano of Krakatoa destroyed itself, making a noise louder than any other noise in recorded history. It was heard 4,600 kilometers away. Pieces of the volcano flew 15 kilometers up into the air. Other pieces fell into the ocean, making waves more than 36 meters high. These terrible waves washed away homes and people all along the south coast of Sumatra and the north coast 
of neighboring Java. 36,000 people lost their lives and 165 towns were destroyed. It took four more days for the rescuers to reach the Bearings and the other survivors at Ketimbang. At first, no boats could move through the water because it was full of rock from the volcano, broken pieces of houses and dead bodies. When the rescuers finally arrived, the survivors were very near to death. But unlike so many thousands of other people in the area, they were alive. <laughs>